Let's talk about nucleosynthesis, which is the formation of elements. There are three main types of nucleosynthesis. These are Big Bang nucleosynthesis, stellar nucleosynthesis, and supernova nucleosynthesis. All three of these are related to the formation and evolution of the universe. Let's start with Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Early after the Big Bang, as the universe continued to expand and cool, the first elements were formed. These were just the nuclei of elements, they were not full atoms, meaning they were ions or they were missing their electron. The formation of the nuclei of hydrogen and helium happened about three minutes after the Big Bang. Now the first elements to form were hydrogen, helium, and a few other trace elements. Eventually, after more cooling and expansion, the hydrogen and helium nuclei were able to attract and hold on to electrons. This allowed them to form full neutral atoms as we have on our periodic table today. Whereas the formation of neutral atoms took until about 300,000 years after the Big Bang. As this matter formed, both 3 minutes after and 300,000 years after the Big Bang, there was a key ratio that happened. There was 75% hydrogen and 25% helium. And this same ratio of hydrogen to helium is seen today in our universe and serves as a key evidence of the Big Bang. It is also a key point where elements were formed in our universe. This formation of hydrogen and helium no longer takes place in large events in our universe. So basically all of the hydrogen and helium we have originated from the Big Bang. The next major point where elements are formed is in stellar nucleosynthesis. And this takes place through the process of fusion in the center of stars. And is responsible for the formation of all of the elements from helium all the way up to iron on the periodic table. And the formation of these elements takes place in the center of stars in the process called fusion, where it is extremely hot and where there's an extreme amount of pressure. This process smashes the nuclei of smaller elements together to form larger ones. Let's go through the general process that takes place in stars to form these heavier elements. Young stars use the elements of hydrogen and helium to fuel fusion in their cores. Now these smaller nuclei, such as hydrogen and helium, are smashed together in the center of stars at such high temperatures that there's enough force to stick them together. Extreme temperatures are required to complete this fusion process in a star. For example, our sun has a core temperature of up to 15 million degrees Celsius. Temperatures like this are required to complete this fusion process. And this is how stars, through the process of fusion, can form heavier and heavier elements. As a young star uses up all of the available hydrogen and helium in its core, it will eventually collapse on itself. This causes an increase in the amount of temperature and the amount of pressure found in its core, which then allows the star to fuse heavier and heavier elements. Now this process continues over and over again until a star with enough mass can fuse smaller nuclei into iron. Now no star can fuse elements heavier than iron. This is the limit, and if there were not another process of nucleosynthesis or another way to form heavier elements, we would not have any elements heavier than iron. Regular stars cannot form atoms heavier than iron because there are not enough neutrons in their cores. The rest of the heavier elements that we have are formed in the process of supernova nucleosynthesis. Now, these elements are formed during the very violent explosions that happen in supernova. As a star runs out of all of the other fuels available to it, from which it can make heavier elements and from which it can complete the process of fusion, it will eventually collapse in on itself, which creates a heavy bounce back or shock wave, which pushes all of the elements that are inside the core of the star out into the space surrounding it. During a supernova explosion, there are two key characteristics that allow for elements heavier than iron to be made. And these two characteristics don't exist anywhere else. These two characteristics are extremely hot temperatures and an abundant number of neutrons. Supernova stars can reach temperatures of 100 billion degrees Celsius. This is 6,000 times hotter than the core of our sun. Also, supernova explosions have extreme numbers of neutrons, which allow for elements heavier than iron to be created. Now, these supernova explosions, or supernova nucleosynthesis, account for all of the other heavier and natural elements that we find on our periodic table. 